today's case uh, had an interesting but rare intraoperative difficulty to deal with. So let me share my experience with you. This is an hypermature cataract in an elderly man with pseudo exfoliation. So we have all the associated issues expected in such eyes such as non-dilating pupil, a calcific capsule and a loose bag with a generalized zonular weakness. So let's get started. After making the side port incisions, the capsule is stained and the chamber is filled with the OVD. I want to use hooks for pupillary dilatation. I make these posterior limbal stab incisions and I'm consciously using capsule hooks instead of the iris hooks as a pupillary expansion device. The idea being, I would want to use the same uh, hooks to stabilize the capsular bag if need arises as I'm expecting a weak or a loose bag in this eye. At this stage, I'm not pulling at the pupil with these hooks, just keeping them engaged. During the placement of the hooks, I can see that the capsular bag is really wobbly and loose. Once all the four hooks are placed, I pull at them to enlarge the pupil to about 5.5 mm. Of course, I can pull the hooks to expand the pupil wide enough up to the limbus, but I'm consciously avoiding this to minimize trauma to the pupillary sphincter. Puncturing the anticapsule is difficult because of the loose zonules, but luckily the anticapsule was not sticking on to the underlying calcified areas. Hence, the capsule could be torn easily and the rexus could be completed with great ease and control. Hydrodissection is one of the most critical steps in such eyes with loose zonules. Just trying to ensure that the nucleus is free from its attachments with the bag. While rotating the nucleus, I push down the nucleus gently and then rotate so that there is a least amount of stress on the zonules during nucleus rotation. And I can see that the capsule is stable and does not move when the nucleus is moving. So now I'm creating some space under the anticapsule by injecting cohesive OVD to implant the CTR. I always prefer to insert the CTR at this stage itself, that is as early as possible during insertion it appears to have got entangled with the hook here and the hook gets dislodged from the pupillary margin. But eventually the CTR is threaded into the bag. And the hook is reinstated to engage the pupillary margin. And this is one of the important tips that I'd like to share to you that is to not to delay the insertion of CTR in such eyes with expected generalized zonular weakness. It provides an equatorial stretch to the capsule bag, thus stabilizing it significantly to withstand all the maneuvers during nucleus management. Everything looks alright now, let's move to nucleus management. I'm creating a central trench using a high power. Once I reach around 75% depth, I divide the nucleus into two halves by lateral separation. Then each heminucleus is then chopped into smaller fragments using the vertical chop technique. Once I have six pieces, I move on to fragment emulsification. Each of these fragments is being emulsified at the iris plane, but the plane of emulsification is much more anterior than what I would have liked. This is partly because the iris plane has moved artificially forward and anteriorly because of the hooks which are tenting it up. And secondly, I may have been scared to work more posteriorly owing to the loose bag. 
but I'm using OVD frequently in between, emulsifying these fragments, which should help me to protect the endothelium. Eventually, all the fragments are emulsified. I am flushing the poster capsule with BSS as is customary for me to just clean off the poster capsule. At this stage, I notice something unusual. The bag of the Rexis looks slightly eccentric. I was wondering why it is. I am continuing with my cortex extraction. And most of the cortex is extracted without much of an issue. At this moment, I get a glimpse of what is wrong. A significant part of the CTR is out of the bag and it is reason which is causing this eccentric rexus. Now, how do we fix this? I need to be aware that while manipulating the CTR, I can potentially cause tear to the rexus margin. I can also cause posterior capsule rupture while trying to forcefully push the CTR into the bag. The first critical thing to do here is to inflate the bag with cohesive OVD so that we have more space to work. Initially, I try with the dialer, but as we can see, this does not work. So I just had to quickly think and find out the best way to deal with the situation. Then I realized that the best way is probably to use a, a micro forceps, something like an end grasping forceps in one hand and then bring the CTR centripetal using a lens dialer, then grasp the CTR with the forceps, exchange the dialer with another forceps and then slowly thread the CTR into the bag using a bimanual technique. This, I have found, is the best and the safest way to manage such situations. This episode highlights the importance of having good quality micro forceps which are readily available to manage a, such a tricky situation. Now, we can see that the Rexis has regained its circular configuration. In this case, I have planned to use the IOL trap technique wherein I will be implanting the multi-piece lens into the sulcus and then achieving optic capture. The leading haptic is placed over the entry capsule and then the lens is gently dialed in. Now both the haptics are in the sulcus. The OVD behind the lens is aspirated out and then the capsule looks are removed. The OVD in the antechamber is aspirated out. Now is the time to achieve optic capture. Now with the irrigation being held with my left hand, the optic of the lens is gently nudged posteriorly so that the optic gets locked behind the rexus margin. The ovalization of the rexus margin is confirmatory of the optic capture. This technique I call it as the IOL trap technique which is my preferred way of uh, IOL fixation in such eyes with generalized weak zonules. Before closing, I am using diluted triamcinolone acetate to rule out any prolapse of vitreous and there is none. The side ports in the main incisions are hydrated and the case is done. Next day, the patient has significant coronal edema which is probably attributable to the slightly anterior plane of uh, emulsification. Luckily, by day 3, uh, the cornea clears off and the patient has a decent post-op vision. So, what did I learn from this case? Uh, 
an eccentric rexis can indicate misplaced CTR. So whenever we land ourselves in such a situation, it's mandatory to retract the iris in that quadrant to find out the cause. To manage these tricky situations, I found out that using a bimanual technique with the help of two micro forceps was the best way to reinsert the CTR into the bag. Hence, it's worthwhile to keep these instruments handy to deal with such tricky situations. Thank you for your attention and hope this helps.